dark bleatings everybody Kaylee here from Happy Goat Horror and it's Novella November on Happy Goat Horror on the website so um, all month I've just been reviewing nothing but novellas not as many as I would have liked but I think we've had two or three a week every week for the whole month schedule so that's not too bad considering I'm reading everything pretty much on my own these days so for the purpose of this video I thought I'll just throw out a few novella suggestions horror novellas and I thought I'll hit you with my favorites and it was really hard to choose between my favorites I read quite a lot of great novellas so here are 40 of my favorite horror novellas for you and I'm going to try and be succinct so this video doesn't go on forever I am going to try and keep it to about 30 minutes. A couple of disclaimers. The reason this video is a little dark and I've just lit it with lamps is because um, if you watch the channel regularly then you may already know that for the last month I have had a series of ailments and illnesses and I haven't been feeling too good and for that reason, um, I mean, I normally am very pale and wan, as you might describe me, but I have been looking particularly corpse-like recently, and I just thought there's no need to give you a really well-lit view of that. I'm feeling a bit self-conscious. Also, the absolute mess of my shelves behind me. I do like to have it neat and orderly for a video normally, but um, I'm having a big Christmas, pre-Christmas deep clean, and uh, I unearthed books from around my house that I didn't know were around my house. I thought all of my books were already in here. And the third and final disclaimer is that if you hear any strange sounds in the background, like, I don't know, the, the sounds of battle, perhaps, or, you know, some snippets of music, or just some hard Party male laughter it's because my husband is having boys night and uh, he has a friend over and they're watching UFC and I don't know what they're doing up there in the attic where I've banished them you know drinking beer and arm wrestling and playing the foosballs I, I don't know what men do I, I, that's what I assume is going on up there so yeah sorry for any background noise so I've broken this into sort of sections let's get started with some classic novellas for you. Now, for the sake of the video, I'm calling a novella anything with fewer than 200 pages. So most people would call this a novel, but it is about 160 pages. And it's I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. I should have included this in my last video about my favorite sort of sickness themed horror and I completely forgot about it. So um, forget the film, if you've seen the Will Smith one or any of the previous iterations of it. The story in the book is far superior than anything that's been put to screen or adapted from it. It was well ahead of its time. I'm pretty sure this was written in the 50s. It's about, um, a doctor scientist called Robert Neville who is basically the last human alive after a virus or a disease of some kind has mutated everybody else into vampires. That's right, vampires, not CGI zombies. This book is really, really tense. The pacing is amazing. There are some really, really great horror scenes in here. And besides that, Robert Neville is a really great protagonist to follow. So yeah, this is a really great book if you're looking for something scary and if you like your vampire or sort of virus fiction, this is a really, really good choice. Next up in our classic novellas, this is really a short story, but I love it and I wanted to slip it in here, is The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Now, this was written back in the days when the medical profession hadn't quite caught up with the idea of treating women as people and when a woman complained of an ailment she was probably going to be diagnosed with being hysterical and of course the logical thing to do when a woman is just hysterical is lock them away in isolation and take any means of productivity or entertainment away from them so basically this is a real world thing so a woman would just be locked away in a room, um, alone, in complete isolation, with no means of entertainment or stimulation of any kind. Women can't be trusted with any form of stimulation because they'll just go mourn it. So um, the character in this is locked in an attic um, with nothing to read, no way to write, no jigsaw puzzles, no music, no instruments, barely a view out of the tiniest, tiniest window. And the room that she's in is papered with this yellow wallpaper and back in the day the sort of real world history of this is back in the day um yellow coloring used to contain i want to say cyanide i don't think that's right uh, i'll put it on the screen i'm cyanide seems a bit strong actually but in any case it was a chemical agent that um if you're exposed to it for prolonged periods of time it could poison you and it could cause hallucinations and stuff so this is the story of a distraught woman who goes mad because of the doctor's recommended cure. It's a really really great and sort of chilling read. Next up in your classic novellas we've got John Polidori's The Vampire. This is the first vampire story published. It's 
very 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 short um i don't want to say too much about it because obviously um you know basically anything i say is a spoiler when it's so spelt but if you're interested in vampire fiction and you want to know where the starting point of it was um obviously that that discounts um folklore and things like like documented folklore and um things that people actually believed back in the day vampire legends and things but the first piece of fiction fictional work um containing vampires is this one so that is a, a neat little read if you're a fan and also in the same vein um carmilla by sheridan sheridan lefanu felifet sheridan lefan is this book about lesbian vampires um it's it's a, it's about a lot more than lesbian vampires but obviously also another book that's kind of one of the firsts of its kind um the, co the cover of the one i have is a bit suggestive isn't it but yeah i really really enjoyed this one i prefer this one to this one if i have to compare classic vampire novella literature and gothic gothic short tales and um, this one is my favorite it's really deep actually and again it's really small but it kind of covers a lot of emotion and um it's a lot of depth of character for something that's such a short read really really recommend that one and last up for our classic novellas, and I just bought this copy, I'm really excited, is um, Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis. In the words of our treasured Lane Kim, this is a confusing Czechoslovakian novel, novella, um, about a guy who thinks he's turning into some sort of beetle, I think. Um, it's been a while since I read it, but it's the kind of story that really sticks with you, and um, the more you think about it, the more unsettling it is. I think this is the kind of story that's open to interpretation, but it's a really good time anyway. And if you if you like your you know classic weird horror tales, that is a great one. Right, let's move on. So not quite classic, but old enough where it can almost be considered a classic. We're going to talk very briefly about Stephen King's The Mist. I'm sure that a lot of people that watch this channel probably know about The Mist because my first eight book videos were ranking Stephen King novels. I ranked everything um, before Holly came out, so almost completely up to date. Um, the Mist is about um, a weird mist that rolls into this town and a group of people that get trapped inside um, a supermarket because there are things in the mist. It's not safe to go out there. It's a really, really great book. Next up on the list, let's get a little bit weird with a sort of fantasy Greek mythology horror and it's Pomegranates by Priya Sharma. It's really beautifully written and this is my first proper Priya Sharma read and I'll definitely be going in for more. This isn't personally what I would normally consider my sort of brand of horror that I really enjoy, although I mean what is my favourite brand of horror? I do tend to enjoy much wider scope than I actually thought I did before I started this channel on my website uh, but Priya's writing is gorgeous and not just her prose but her actual handwriting look at that that is you know that came from a pen that's not printed she's oh her writing's stunning but this is a take on some Greek mythology tales so she's put her own spin on a few characters namely um, Persephone, Demeter, Demeter, Hecate, Hikati, I don't know how you pronounce them, I'm so sorry. But yeah, this is um this is kind of an apocalyptic tale, but the apocalypse is on the backdrop of what's going on in the personal lives of these characters. It's just really interesting. I've never read anything like it. So if you're looking for something that's completely out of the box of what you're used to, this is a really, really great read. And if you're not that into horror, um, I think that you'd enjoy this as well. It's like it kind of it's like sits on the fence. So it's got sort of like horror themes, but it's not written in a way like this wouldn't scare you, I wouldn't think, unless we're talking sort of existential fear. Um, but yeah, this isn't like a blood and gut story. Next up, a little uh, weird tale. This was gifted to me um, by the author, but not for review or anything. It was just a present that he gave to me when I last saw him. Swimming in the Sea of Trees by Adam Millard. If you like stories that are grounded in real world locations, this is probably a really great one for you. This is based in the, oh, I'm going to pronounce it wrong. The Acre, the Acre, the um, Acre, the Acre. You know the suicide forest in Japan? That's that's where that's where this is set um but this is about a couple who go on a hike in this forest the the guy knows exactly what the forest is what it's rumored to be and he wants to go there for that reason he's kind of got a morbid fascination with it his girlfriend or is it his wife i'm not sure his partner sorry in any case um doesn't know where they are really and doesn't know the history otherwise she probably would never agree to go there and then while they're in the forest 
some spooky stuff starts to happen to them and I won't say any more than that but this is normally the kind of book that I actively dislike because I, I tend to not enjoy real world locations that much um, especially things that deal with a location like this because very often I find that people just make things in very bad taste where they like exploiting the um, tragedy of a real world event but I didn't find that in this case I thought this was actually very sensitively handled and it's not sort of like sensationalist in how it deals with the location if that makes any sense it's a really good little horror story and if you want to be you know creeped out and disturbed by something this is a good story to read next up we're gonna deal with some sort of like this is the end of the world but on a really small scale type of story so this is one I read quite a while back and I'm a bit fuzzy on the details but I do think about the overall feeling it gave me very often and it's Darkness on the Edge of Town by Brian Keane so this is about uh, if I remember correctly this gave me sort of like almost horror under the dome vibes in that there's a town that's shrouded in some sort of like darkness and I think there's stuff in there I think that when I originally reviewed this years back when I read it I said it reminded me sort of as a, of a cross between the mist and under the dome so if that sounds appealing to you this is a really great read next up one of my absolute favorite novellas of all time and this was my first read by this author and it really hooked me into his writing it's sour candy by keelan patrick burke this is such a fun story and it's in the same sort of like vein as those really great old anthology shows like i'm old so if you're you know like a decade younger than me you know, won't know what i'm talking about probably but things like the twilight zone and the outer limits and um I don't know, uh, Tales from the Crypt Keeper. It feels like it could be an episode of one of those. In fact, it does remind me of an episode of one of those. And I actually asked the author once if he was inspired by it, but he'd never seen the show. So um, it's like one of those like great minds think alike kind of scenarios. But this is about a guy that um, sees a distraught mother and her horrible screeching kid in a supermarket. And he talks to the kid, which turns out to be a massive mistake <laughs> because the kid sort of inserts himself into this guy's life and everything starts to get so weird. I really can't praise this book enough. I think it's like, I'm sure it has fans, but I just don't feel like enough people know about it or talk about it. It's really, 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 really great. And it's a really short read. You could, you know, you could sit down with like a nice hot drink and sort of like blast through this if you're in the mood to have um, a great scary read in one sitting, but it just gets so weird in all the best horror ways. So like, this is like really like near the top of my list for absolute favorites. Next up, a lesser known little novella from a writer that's unbelievably talented and I just want to see his stuff everywhere and it's The Last Bus by Paul M. Feeney. Um, this again is sort of like end of worldsy, there's some shit going on and it's set in that time of night where you know you're catching the last bus really late and a lot of stuff is going quite horribly awry in this town and I don't want to say more about it, you should read it. He, he really doesn't know how good a writer Writer he is. I can't sing his praises enough. Hey, you guys want werewolves? Check out Downwind Alice by C.C. Adams. Um, this book is oh, it's so good. Um, I feel like werewolf horror, like really good werewolf horror, is actually quite hard to find compared to other genres like zombies vampires and ghosts there's an abundance of that stuff but werewolves and witches i always say that they they're really really hard to find if you're not looking for like paranormal teen romance there's nothing wrong with that genre but if you're looking for like adult horror and this like ticks all of those boxes for me the theme of this i actually thought was really ballsy um for the time for the year that it was written um i can't go into it but you'll see what i mean if you read it it's about a fractured relationship and um obviously with most werewolf narratives there's sort of like this like personality duality sort of theme going but this is this is just like a balls out great monster story so i really recommend this one all right so giving you some monsters and some weirdness you, you want some real world horror novella stuff let me introduce you to dear laura by Gemma and more um this was my first Gemma and more read so this is about a girl who when she's young her best friend gets into a van and then is never seen again and it, that has plagued her for her whole life and then every year on her birthday she receives um a note from an unknown person who 
claims to be the person who took her friend and so she's in this sort of like horrible quid pro quo sort of like exchange trying to figure out what happens and things it's um kind of a hard read because the there are there's some quite hard real world themes in this but it's um you know it's again you could do this in one sitting if you clear a few hours of your day and you sit down i would recommend reading it in one go because it's one of those stories that like just begs to be absorbed all in one take um Gemma Moore is really bloody talented and um uh, i can feel like the beginnings of a new like writer obsession the way i am with like adam neville and kit power tim Lev, and i feel like Gemma Moore has like joined those ranks now this is a really great book if you enjoy real world horror it's got some um upsetting themes so maybe tre check trigger warnings but it doesn't it's not an extreme horror book or anything it doesn't lean really heavily into any like sort of really really upsetting detail but you know emotionally this might be a bit hard but it, it's so good next up um i'm including it because it's full to within my page count and it's the vessel by adam neville and this is about a single parent who is sort of struggling with juggling working full time and all the financial stuff with taking care of her daughter and she starts working for a new client oh she's like a carer like a, ho a housekeeping carer sort of sort of role like an in-home carer sorry I, I can't think of words properly today but yeah she um she gets a new client who is pretty despicable to her but for whatever reason forms a very weird bond with her daughter and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on i can't i'm not going to talk about this any more than that because i have ranted and raved and enthused about adam neville endlessly and i have a, another video on the channel actually where i ranked all the adam neville books so i'll put the link to that in the description if you're interested in a bit more information and a bit more in-depth reviews but this is such a great read it's one of my favorites okay so next up if you want a root and tooting good time i would like to also recommend a very very short novella by um, an author called erica summers called bad god's tower and by a root and tooting good time i just mean like it's kind of feels like a like a western almost um it's about these two criminals that um do a jailbreak and they're off on an adventure but they're horrible people and you don't want good things to happen to them and it's um um, yeah it's a really sort of like fun short read you can definitely do it in one sitting and you should that's another one you should do this in one sitting I think it's only about 60 pages if I if I remember correctly um, yeah re that's a really really fun little read and it's so out of the box and strange I was sent it for review for happy goat horror and again it's not something that I would normally have picked up by myself like it probably wouldn't have appealed to me but I'm really really glad that the author sent it to me because I just had such a fun time with it so that's the other one <clears throat> so that one is really good if you're looking for something a bit lighter like the characters are horrible people don't get me wrong but it's kind of like a lighter horror story than some of the others um like jet like you know like dear laura for example it's complete opposite end of the spectrum if that's something that's more your speed um that's a really good one okay um i'm gonna tell you about two monster horrors now um let's start with um saint neath by david watkins Yim. this is spiders a town that becomes overrun with these enormous spiders and um i'm an arachnophobe to the point where i start screaming shaking and crying hysterically like sobbing and i have to go get my husband and i know that that's ridiculous overreaction if you live in the uk where spiders are just not poisonous and they can't harm you it's a ridiculous overreaction but knowing that doesn't help me so this book was really scary to me for that reason but um regardless of whether or not you you, you're afraid of spiders um, it's such a fun sort of like adventure horror tale to me I really love stories that are about a town getting overtaken by something and yeah it's just really fast paced and the characters were great um, I love David Watkins writing he's he's so good at um, pacing and building suspense and tension and everything like maybe that would be in my top five for the whole video as well if I'm going to recommend something like short for you to read this month like that is such a great story like super underrated I wish more people were talking about that one as well like it's such fun okay so 
Next up, um, it's a monster horror and it's called The Thing Under Your Bed by Stephen Kozniewski. And this one, um, similar to Sour Candy, this reminds me of like the golden age of horror, for me anyway, like that late 80s, early 90s kind of stuff. Like I feel like this could be a really great like extended anthology episode or even like a short feature. Like um, the kind of like vibe it has to me is it's like one of those things that could have come out as a film in like 1988 and then no one knew it at the time and then it develops like a cult following later um I don't know it's just got such a cool vibe but anyway the story is about um a little girl who is on her bed with her stuffed rabbit she doesn't have a very good home life and then some horrible voice starts talking to her from underneath the bed and it's basically a story told over one night where you know you can't you know she can't even sort of so much as stray a toe off her bed otherwise this thing is going to rip her to shreds it's really really scary and um like Stephen does write horror but I'm not normally scared by stuff but this one like really unnerved me so if you're looking for something that's like like a classic good good old school horror story then this is probably a book that you'd really like next up um and I'm putting this in this like little section because again this reminds me of that um oh what is that vampire film with david bowie in it called i'll put it up here somewhere i really can't remember but it's verushka or verushka i'm not sure how you pronounce it by jan stinchko this was sent to me for review as well and based on the there's nothing wrong with the cover but i'm just, i'm very weird about covers i probably wouldn't have picked this up on my own but it was sent to happygohorror.com for review and i'm so glad because i'm not saying it's a vampire story but there is definitely something going on with this character and it's got such a great um narrative structure this book it's um it's told um generationally so we're following like um people in one generation of a family so we're jumping between decades and everything it was yeah it was so mysterious and there was like this really dangerous like gothic romance element to it which isn't normally my bag but I oh my god I just it was eating this up and yeah I read this all in one go I, I meant to start it read a chapter and go to bed I stayed up until I finished it it was absolutely spectacular so yeah that's like a lesser known one as well I don't see people talking about it and I don't understand why it's just so good so really really recommend that if you sort of if you sort of enjoy um mysterious horror um possibly some sort of monster but maybe not um very slight dark fantasy element to it and a very 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 slight sort of like erotic undertones as well I say very slight it's not slight there are erotic undertones but it's not like erotica it's not erotic fiction so it's you know not going to make you blush when you read it but there's yeah it was just so well written so well done I yeah can't can't recommend that one enough I absolutely ate that one up like a vampire you might say this next one we're going back to your sort of real world sort of emotional horror and it's the dark matter of natasha by an author a really talented author i'm so sorry i can't remember the author's name right now i'll put it on the screen oh i can't believe i've done that i was doing so well as well off the top of my head for all these ebooks um yeah this is a uh, just such a great story i was really hooked in it's a it's about it's a dark tale about a lady called natasha and her life hasn't panned out the way she wanted and we're in the shoes of someone who knows her and I, I don't really want to say too much about it but this is sort of um this is definitely like a real world horror and it's not horror in the sense it's not similar to like Dear Laura or it's you know it's not serial killer type or anything like that it's something like if you're the kind of person who enjoys like an emotional crisis like that kind of stuff like a like a deep character study type of horror um like an inner horror kind of thing like that this would definitely be your bag it was a great read so so next up a sort of weird category for this list but my aim with this video was to give you um a list that kind of covers all of your subgenres in these novellas as much as possible so i'm really trying to include real world vampires werewolves ghosts demons all of that and so i just feel compelled even though you might already know it's not my favorite um to include some extreme horror here um so if you watched my extreme horror reading vlog you'll know that 
um, I was scarred for life. So this is not my favourite genre, I will admit. However, if you're an extreme horror reader, I didn't want to leave you out of the list. So here are some recommendations for you. <laughs> um, first up, Den of the Way Rats by Terry Miller. Now, I did not realise when this was sent to me that it was an extreme horror story um, because I'm an idiot. So I went in blind. Um, I'm sure that the author probably actually forewarned me about this. I, I, I can't imagine that they would have not told me, um, but I, I probably just skimmed over it and then, you know, got to the book a bit later when I'd forgotten what was actually said in the email. So it's it's about weir rats it's exactly what it sounds like but it is just the dirtiest most vicious book um now i i did enjoy it in a you have to laugh at how horrible it is but i would check the trigger warnings on that one but it's different i'll give you that for a story you know werewolves yes i've seen those and i've seen some other weir animals but weir rats that was that was a new one um next this is the most heinous book I've ever read in my entire life and it's Dead Inside by Chandler Morrison. So um, again, if you're not a seasoned extreme horror reader, I would definitely check the trigger warnings or maybe I could save you the time and just tell you what trigger warnings for everything. Absolutely all the trigger warnings. This is, if you're looking for like really extreme, extreme horror, I'm pretty sure that your bases are covered with this one. Um, I'm not an expert, but this is about a guy that's got a bit of an obsession with the dead and it, there's a weird sort of romance in this book also. You might be able to tell from the lovely beautiful flowers on the cover there that I was scarred, scarred for life I tell you, and um, I think that fans of extreme horror probably would really enjoy this because it's very highly regarded by people who read a lot in the genre. I've spoken to lots of people who absolutely love this book so yeah I thought I'd include that one. Next up uh, Violence on the Meek by Stuart Bray which also scarred me. This has got the most edge lordy protagonist of all time is written in first person it's intentionally so as well it's like the author kind of makes a joke about this guy um it's really nasty once again check the trigger warnings um it's about a guy that just hates the world and he wants to see it burn so if that's your jam you'd probably really enjoy this so that is another one for you there um <laughs> this one jesus Christ Zola by D. McCluskey. Now, at the time that I read this, <laughs> I hated it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. D. E. McCluskey, if you see this, I'm so sorry. I hated it. Um, I was reading it thinking, this is just disgusting for disgusting sake. I thought that the story was lacking a bit. Um, I was pretty mad about the images that were being forced into my brain as I read it, even though I asked, I literally asked for it. I asked for extreme horror recommendations and this is what people, you know, told me to read. So I read it. So this is my own fault. But I have found that as time has passed, um, I've started to view it more through like a humorous lens and in, I enjoy it more retrospectively than I did at the time of reading it. But it's about a guy who grows up with a stupid cheese related name and his family dynamic is whack i don't know why i thought i could pull off saying whack oh totally dude um and yeah again if you're if you're a sort of seasoned extreme horror reader i think you'll really enjoy this um, i read a lot of reviews after i read it the people that read a lot in the genre were saying that they really enjoyed this because it actually had some like emotional depth and like a cat more like character based stuff which i think i don't think i appreciated that when i read it because i was just so disgusted because it put me off cheese forever um but yeah i think you know if you're someone who really enjoys that genre this this is a very popular one so i think you probably enjoy it my personal favorite of the extreme horror books and this is the second to last one i'm gonna mention um is judith sonnets no one rides for free um i had my nails done the other day and my friend who does my nails told me off because she said she bought this on my recommendation and then was horrified so <laughs> um <laughs> this is about um a mother who's driving her two kids across the country because they're going to start um university or college and she stops to get gas and and then when she gets back, unbeknownst to her, um, there's someone else in the car and she doesn't realise till it's too late. And it's absolutely 
bloody horrific um again check the trigger warnings they are the, the warnings are given in this book in fact there's an entire full page trigger warning when you about to hit the bit that starts to get really difficult to read but i was very enthralled with the story it was just an absolute like nightmare scenario so i was like really hooked and i think that judas on it is really talented and last up um, I can't not mention Womb because I just had, had an absolute blast reading this one as well. It's extreme and there's loads of violence and everything, but um, I don't know. I think it's the writing style or the or the, the tone, the sort of tongue-in-cheek tone that it was written in that didn't make it like a super hard read for me. I really enjoyed the structure of the story. So we've got a guy that's booked at a motel room and then he's hired a sex worker and he's sort of like telling her these stories. And then we're like, so we're into cutting between the stories and them in the room. I really love um you know, like a more interesting narrative structure like stuff like those back and forth like that um I really enjoyed it and then the last chapter I don't in, I don't think it was intended to be as funny as I found it but I absolutely died laughing um but that's not an insult to the book I I really enjoyed it I just had such a hoot with it um very spoke very briefly to the author afterwards who commented on my video and um I think he said um I'm glad you enjoyed it except for the last chapter and I was like no that's a misunderstanding like I really enjoyed it and then the last chapter just like sealed it for me it was yeah it was yeah such a fun time so yeah um this is a really popular book and like for good reason to be honest Okay, so these next two books are an absolute hoot. I cannot sing the praises of them enough. Um, first up, The Bucket List by Mark Taus and Kaisto Healy, or Kaisto Healy. I'm so sorry. I know we've talked about how to pronounce your name. I'm really, really sorry. Um, I'm terrible. Um, this is about um, three different couples who are out driving one night. It's a ho horrible weather. They've all got things that they want to tick off their bucket list, like unconnected couples. They don't know each other. And they all end up staying in this B and B, um, hosted by an elderly couple called Marge and Albie. Um, but there's something up with Marge and Albie. <laughs> the night just, you know, takes terrible turns for all involved. It's absolute genius. It's the best of sort of comedy horror because it's not like trying too hard to be funny. The comedy is coming from like the tongue in cheek. Um, sense of humour that the, the authors have. It's, oh my god, it was so, so good. I was laughing out loud reading it, but the scenes of horror are really, really scary and horrific. So like, you'd never want to be in this circumstance, but you're chuckling as you're reading about the misfortune of others who you actually really like. Um, yeah, this is a, ow, oh, sorry, I had a stabbing pain. Um, yeah, this is a, yeah, I can't recommend this one enough. This is like one of my favourite books I've ever read. And then next up, um, Nana by Mark Taus as well. Um, I'm such a fan of his. This is my first Mark Taus book that I ever read. And I think I've read most of what he's released now. And I'd recommend all of it. But this is my favourite of his solo releases. This is about a kid who goes to stay with his Nana for the night. And... Um, she's gross and it's the way that he's like describing her from this kid's like pov and everything it's just so funny and like relatable and like it feels a bit mean-spirited sometimes but then you're like oh no way i i get it i understand i empathize and uh, nana decides to take her grandson out to bingo night or something and he meets her friends and there's uh something up with nana and her friends <laughs> It's like, again, I really can't recommend this one enough. It is just such a good, funny, but horrific time. It's it's really, 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 really great. So yeah, very enthusiastic about this one. In fact, last year, um, I decided that this was Happy Goat Horror's best novella of the year and we sent Mark a prize for it. So yeah, that's how much I endorse this book. Okay, these next three are by the same author, and I think you might actually be hard-pressed to find them. I think that some of these, or maybe even all of them, have gone out of print, but I did look online before I started making this video to make sure that you can actually still get them, um, even if it's second-hand. So we've got um, Nathan Robinson is the author, and we've got Midway, Catch Up On Everything, and Steerers. This was his debut. 
such a great premise and this has got an apocalyptic feel to it it's about um a family who wake up one day and they realize there are people just stood outside their house staring at it and then as time goes on more and more people turn up and they're just staring at the house looks super creepy don't want to tell you any more than that obviously because we're going into spoilers territory but if that's the kind of premise that like floats your boat for a good story then this is a really really great story um catch up on everything is like great but sad it involves a monster i won't tell you what kind but it's yeah it's definitely not your real world horror but it's very um heartfelt and i feel you know obviously there's like very strong metaphor going on with um what was going on here thematically really really great read short read um so yeah if you're if you're someone who um, likes to be a little bit sad with your horror this is a good story and then midway um Steerers used to be my favorite book by nathan robinson but i think maybe this one is because it's the one i think most often and this is about like is it a i was gonna say long distance swimmer i don't think that that's the right term but it's about you know um you know those people who competitively swim and like they're in the ocean and like a boat follows them to make sure they don't drown it's about one of those and um but then you know there's something in the water that shouldn't be there something scary and it's just so tense and this is this has got to be one of the most nightmarish scenarios of all the books i've mentioned is i cannot imagine swimming in the deep ocean and coming across something that should not be there the ocean is scary enough without stuff like that so really really great read you might have to get those second hand you might have to go to ebay but if you can get any of those i i yeah i don't think you'll be disappointed next up our next author that we're highlighting here is water shock it's tim levin i've got four novellas for you all very different so this is his most recent novella release the last day and the first this is such a beautiful horror story but it's oh god there's like the horror elements of what an absolute nightmare you would never want to live in this scenario but basically the human race is gone apart from rose she's the last one and this is kind of about like her last day and then the first day of the start of something new that's being ushered in so it's sort of like hor horrific because the reason that there aren't people left is horrible but then also it's like very hopeful and optimistic at the end as well so it's like a really it's a really nice natured book about death um which yeah really spoke to me and i i loved it it's, it's really really different as well it's like it, the horror elements are horrific but it's light on the horror if that makes sense and this is more of like a people story than anything else and it, i really really rate it it's beautiful um still life is about all the death it's just all the death man um this is a uh, one of the scarier novellas in this list from tim levin no, no, levin levin i think it's based on a song i used to know which song i don't remember i think it was an iron maiden song um yeah people have been sort of like taken over by something and there are just mounds and mounds of bodies and um pretty pretty spooky guys so yeah if that's some um, like your bag like again we're in the apocalyptic type of scenario here and the cover really does like capture the tone if you're looking for something like dismal this is a really good book to pick up um next let's go with the reach of children once again absolutely beautiful book that is somewhat about death and it's kind of got like existential themes um you know about the topic um light on the horror quite mysterious um don't really want to say anything about it because i'm afraid I, I i i've got like a very small synopsis in my head but i'm afraid that it's actually a spoiler so i'm not gonna say but yeah this is just a lovely book i think this might actually be hard to get hold of though i think this had a limited run so if you can get it get it but yeah it's lovely last up in the tim levin section we have rhyme which is a really cool space horror it's a retelling of um the rhyme of the ancient mariner but this is set in space and it's about um, a guy like a technician that's controlling this spaceship that's carrying like thousands and thousands of people that are in cryo sleep so he's you know the decision maker and he encounters something unexpected out there and uh, some poor decisions are made shall we say and it has disastrous results so yeah this is like such a cool story and like maybe favorite of the novellas it's really hard to pick a favorite novella or a favorite book with tim Lebb, and actually i love them all but yeah if space horror is your jam this is like a good one okay we're nearly at the end and we're into my last two sections we're going into the sinister horror company section and i'm 
declaring this one with a heavy heart because the Sinister Horror Company is one of the best indie horror publishers in my opinion and it's closing its doors so if you like the sound of any of these books you need to get them before January because that's when it's all closing down and everything's going out of print so first up um, I've talked about this one um, off and on it's King Carrion by Rich Hawkins which I swear down is one of the best vampire stories I've ever read since I read this this has been in my top five vampire stories along with like Dracula yeah this is like so scary and um, um, if you like your vampires that are as nasty sort of killing machines like 30 Days of Night style vampires like this is a book that you might like set in a small town so it's got that real like oh, you know trapped disaster sort of feel to it can't praise it enough I've been going on and on about this to everyone since I read it years ago so yeah you should definitely pick this up if you like scary vampire fiction next um two of my favorites from Justin Park um, Mad Dog, which, um, I don't want to say the subgenre because I'm not actually sure if it is a spoiler. Mm, yes, it would be a spoiler. So this is about, um, a telling of a crazy event that happened in a men's prison. So it's just, it's just not what you think it is. So oh, I can't really say much. Oh, sorry. This one is by J.R. Park, by the way, who is the owner of Sinister Horror Company. So as well as being a great, um you know, advocate for other horror authors with his press. He's also a very talented author himself. So this is one of his best books. I wish I could tell you the subgenre, but I can't because it's a spoiler. But yeah, this is a really, really great story. Great pacing, a whole load of crazy stuff happens. Um, it's not, no, I can't tell you anything. I can't, but just trust me. It's really good. <laughs> you should pick it up. And this is another J.R. Park story, one of my favourites, The Company of Words. Um, we start with a security guard, like a nighttime security guard, and this is a particularly weird night and some really strange stuff starts happening. And then we're into cutting his story with something else that's going on as well. So yeah, I love that back and forth sort of storytelling style. Um, once again, I really can't say much. Um, J.R. Park is really good at the twists actually which is why it's so hard to talk about his books without spoiling them um, but yeah of, of his um, works uh, his novellas like these are two of my favourites and they're great and then the last one for Sinister Horror Company is God Bomb by Kit Power who is one of my favourite authors of all time like not just one of my favourite indie authors but one of my favorites of all time like he was up there with Stephen King for me and this was his like debut and it's so good it's about a guy who goes into a church and he's armed and he threatens to kill everyone inside unless God himself has a conversation with him so it's really really great tense premise uh, I loved how everything went in the book I was very satisfied with it at the end I never knew what was going to happen but as a as a horror a real world horror scenario goes that is absolutely awful I'm not a church goer myself but you could apply this to anywhere well I suppose you couldn't actually because of the god aspect but you know what I mean like uh, I just can't imagine anything worse um so yeah this is like such a great book and Kit Power is such a great writer and then the last two on the list, they're not Sinister Horror Company releases, but they are both Kit Power books. And um, I recently did a little TikTok about these. So we've got A Song for the End, which is an apocalyptic story, and The Finite, which is also an apocalyptic story, but they're completely different um, takes on the subgenre, I suppose. So this one is super fun. It's about a guy who's in a band and um, they write a song that actually gets onto the radio, which is like a dream come true for every musician, only the uh, the thing is that everyone who listens to the song is sort of uh, doomed. So it's, <laughs> yeah, bad things start to happen, and it's just wild, it's apps, it's like such a like, fun premise. So it's, yeah, the pacing is really, really great, and I was really along for the ride on this one. I absolutely love apocalyptic fiction. And then last up, The Finite is way more emotional than a song, for the end this is about a father and his kid who have survived the apocalypse and now they're sort of like holed up in their house um but there are you know external threats obviously so this is like i'd describe this as like a classic apocalyptic story but you know maybe have some 
some tissues handy for the tears that you might shed at this one. There's some sad sadness in it, but it's so good. Yeah, Kit Power is great, man. Um, if you've seen in my channel before or read any of my reviews on the website, you'll know that I'm a Kit Power super fan. So I know this list is super indie heavy and I actually didn't realise that until like I'm looking at the pile that's in front of me now. I didn't do that on purpose. I just picked up 40 novellas that I really enjoyed. So um, yeah, if you have read any of these, I would love to talk to you in the comments. Like, let me know what you think because I feel like all of these deserve a wider audience and I love talking about books. I love making the videos and getting to just chat about them, but I am kind of talking into the ether. So if you could actually speak to me in the comments, that would just be great because I love talking about books with everyone. Everybody. Um, hope there was something new in there for you to pick up. I hope something appeals. If you want a bit more information about any of these before you make a decision, then again, like ask me in the comments and I'll respond. I just didn't want to give away spoilers in the actual main video. Um, yep, hope this was okay for you all. Hope you enjoyed it. I still don't know how to end a video, so bleed.